Kathy by Design. I'm glad you could join me here today. I have a lovely little mixed media project that we're going to make with Little Birdie Fairy Sparkle Collection. Little Birdie flowers and some chipboard and some of their chalk paint. You may or may not know this, but um, Little Birdie makes a wonderful chalk paint. It's got a matte finish. It spreads very smoothly. It's thick. It's got great coverage. So that is what I use to make our little background tag. This is um, this is like a tag folio, I'm calling. This is kind of a fun design. Um, the Fairy Sparkle, I used a lot of the 6x6. I'm down to just scraps, people, so I'm having to get really creative. But this is a charming collection. And then I had some scraps from my 12 by 12. I had one, two full sheets that may be able to do this. So on the cover of this mixed media tag, I put down a background with my chalk paint. And then I also sponged over it with some distress inks and worn lipstick and dusty concord. And I also added some cobblestone texture down here with texture paste and a little birdie cobblestone circle stencil. And then I just started layering all of this up with some um, cheesecloth back behind to add lots of dimension and the looks like it's in a cloud. I added a little glitter to our Fussy Cup Fairy wings. These are the little ephemera bits that come with this collection. I added some feathers, Spanish moss, and these beautiful Kimberly flowers um, that I broke apart the cluster so I could, you know, spread them out and use them. So this is the front of the tag, and this is designed. I've got ribbon up here and some little silver keys. This can set out as a decor piece, like in a little girl's room, it would be so sweet. But then on the back, there's actually a folio. So this would be a great way to document a sleepover, a birthday party, a tea party, um, just really, really cute. So I added a little glitter embossing powder to the fairy's wings, and then I took this gorgeous wreath circle chip board, heat embossed it with shabby white embossing powder, and added a few of these darling little birdie flowers. Some buttons from my stash, and then we have a ribbon closure here. And this is a just a really fun little project. Um, I show you in the tutorial how to build the base for this wonderful pull-out folio. This has lots of little interactive features, like here we have little tuck spots that we've made with the doilies from the collection. So you can put a photo on the back or journaling and tuck it in here. You could add journaling or a photo as well. And this is actually a pullout page. I left the inside pages blank because you're gonna put photos there anyway. And then room here for a photo. This is the same thing, another one of these gorgeous little fairies and another little pull-out folio here. And here's our little fairy on a swing. I love this little fairy in a jar. This is one of the sweetest images I have ever seen. And there's room here for a nice photo. This measures five and a half by five and a half. And it does stick out the sides a little bit, but that doesn't bother me. Um, and then here's a little pocket treatment that you'll learn how to make. And then I just took a strip of the three by four four images in the 12 by 12 collection and scored between them to make this little accordion fold folio. So this all closes up, oops, just like this. So you've got this little door. And then this page flips over. There's another panel here and then a little lift page with another sweet little toadstool fairy. Room up here for photo and then a little tuck spot with a photo mat and room to tuck more photos in here. So just a sweet way to document a little birthday party or a sleepover or a tea party. So the tutorial today is gonna to focus on creating the base and the um, little interactive mechanisms inside the folio and then creating the tag base as well. So if you're ready to get started, let's get this tutorial going. Okay, just to get started, I took this piece of old Corrugate cardboard. This was just some packing material, and I trimmed it to five by seven and then just tapered off the corners to make this little tag shape. Then I used my brayer to put down 
a nice layer of the Little Birdie chalk pink ballet paint on both sides and also on the edges. So now what I want to do is create like a ground. And I'm just going to take some Distress Ink and gathered twigs and I'm just going to randomly brush this. I don't want it to be a straight line. And I'm going to take some texture paste. This is crackle texture paste and a little birdie stencil. This is the cobblestone circles. And I'm going to put this on here at an angle. And I'm just going to apply this texture paste through the stencil. And as this texture paste dries, it's going to pick up the color of the Distress ink that's on the bottom layer. And we're going to get this really neat crackly cobblestone texture on the bottom of our tag. Smooth this out. I don't want it to be too smooth. I actually want it to have some. So I'm just going to do this with my palette knife. And then lift my stencil. And we're just going to let that dry. That's the hardest thing about mixed media is being patient. While our mixed media is drying, we're going to take one sheet of the 12 by 12 and we're going to cut it into two 12 by 5 and a half inch panels. And now we're just going to come over here and join this down the right hand side. Spread this out just a little. And you can use score tape if you prefer. I just like that the liquid adhesive doesn't add any bulk. And I'm going to overlap this a quarter of an inch. So what we're going to end up with is a 23 and 3 quarter by 5 and a half inch panel. going to score this into our accordion folio. So we're going to place this on our scoring tool and we're going to score first at five and a half and then we're going to go ahead and score at five and three quarters and that little spine is going to allow us to tuck all of our pages into the cover. So fold this on the five and three quarter inch line Tuck it into the corner of your scoring tool and go ahead and score it five and a half and fold. Tuck it into the corner. Score it five and a half. And I might be able to squeeze in 11 over here. Now we're going to accordion fold this just like this I'll leave that there that'll make a little pocket and you can see now we have this little um, photo folio that we can attach to the back of our tag so sweet what we want to do next is go ahead and cut one two three four panels that are five and three eighths because you need to leave a little room by five and three eighths and we're going to cut these four panels from our six by six pad there's one there's two there's three and there's now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink just the edges and the, along the scores of this interior so that we don't have a um, 
completely white background. We're going to have just a little bit peeking through. So I'm using Distress Ink and Worn Lipstick and Dusty Concord, and I'm just going to very quickly skip along the edge. And this paper takes ink so beautifully. I really love how easy it is to ink up this paper. Um, so you've got the one side, which is just fantastic pattern, and then you've got the blank side that you can go ahead and add your mixed media touches to, and it's a really beautiful thing. When you're adding distressing, you want to actually start, if you're not familiar with it, you want to actually start on your mat and then swipe in. Don't go down like this, you'll leave a big mark. But if you swipe in from the side and kind of just feather that in there, you're going to get really beautiful coverage and you won't get blotches. It's just going to look really natural. So now that I've done my worn lipstick, I'm going to come in with my dusty Concord. And I'm not going to completely cover with this. I'm just going to hit this like at some spots. And with a little bit of water, spray it into your hand and just kind of flick it onto those inked areas. Not too heavy, just kind of like, um, just almost like a gentle mist. And that's just gonna help those inks to blend and create a really beautiful effect, modeled effect. Now come in and heat dry. Okay, now we're ready. You can see we've got this all done, and I know it looks like a hot mess right now, but you'll see when we get this all glued in. We're gonna glue in our five and three eighths by five and three eighths inch panels that we cut from our six by six pad. And this one's gonna go right here. We're just going to glue that straight in. Then this one, we're going to do just three sides. The bottom and the two sides. We're going to glue that in. And you can see now how that ink just provides a little background frame for our designer papers. And then our fairy on a swing, we're gonna do the same thing, just three sides. Swing this, where's that fold? And this is gonna cover up where we joined our papers together, which is very handy. And then this piece is going to go over here, and this is kind of going to come over top as a pocket, which is really fun. So just do glue on all four sides here. And then so that this pocket will hold a little more, I've got just some scrap pieces of paper. And we're gonna cut these. We're just gonna measure the depth on this page. And we will cut these slightly shorter than the depth of the pocket. And I call these gussets. I guess you could call them hinges. Um, but I just fold these in half. Then I adhere it to the pocket flap so that the folded edge faces the edge of the paper. And you just glue that down. 
this just allows that pocket to hold more. And when you have goodies that you want to put in your pocket, it's a really handy little trick. Okay. And then adhesive on the top of that gusset. Fold your page over and burnish. And this is how this is going to fold up. Okay. And this part, I went ahead, so let me show you how this folds. We've got a valley, it looks like a valley. This just folds in on itself, then this will fold out. You've got two more pages here. So this is the back cover, and I wrote myself a little note to put the adhesive here. This is what's going to glue onto the base so of the So open tab. your little folio out so that your bird house is on the right, on the left rather, and take another six by six piece of paper. And I've trimmed this one to five and three eighths, and I've left it the six. Score three quarters of an inch along the top to be a little hinge. And I might trim, I think I'm gonna trim just a little bit more off of this, take this down to about four and a quarter. And this is going to be a little lift feature here. Okay, so I trimmed this to five. Um, and I like the way that looks better. So I'm just going to ink around my edges like I did on the others. Place my adhesive on the back. And center this up and glue it down. Now, where you cut off, I don't know where that went, I've got this beautiful piece of designer paper that I cut off and I'm just going to use this. I'm going to mark it with my thumbnail. Ink it. And I'm going to lay it right over that hinge to hide it. It's a really good sneaky trick. So then what you need to do is cut a five by, looks like five and an eighth. And you can go ahead and ink these edges up real quick just to make everything consistent. So this ended up being four and three quarters by five and it looks like about an eighth. It's really close, but just slightly smaller. I just marked mine with a pencil. And this is gonna go down on this flap. So that gives us an extra spot for a photo. Now I want to show you how to create a little cute uh, tuck spot here. I took one of our 4x6 Fairy Sparkle um, ephemera cards and I trimmed around it like this and then I left this edge. So I'm going to fold this back. We're going to put adhesive all along here and just along the bottom here. And we're gonna glue this down to cover up our little spine. And then this is just a piece of paper. This is, I think it's like four by four. Yes, and I rounded the corners and this is gonna tuck, once that glue is dry, I can tuck this down in here. And we've created a little tuck spot for a photo mount or journaling either way let's see if that'll go right down in there and then that closes flip your folio to the back where we wrote our little note to ourselves and put a quarter inch strip of score tape 
so that it comes up about one and a half inches from the base of your album. Remove the liner, and we're gonna put this pretty ribbon down. And because this is a sheer ribbon, I um, I made sure I had it centered, and then I'm just gonna wrap this around and tie a bow. And that's our closure for our little album. Just like that. So you can still open it and unfold it this way, but it won't be flapping around on the back um, in the meantime. So, and I'll work on that bow, but you get the idea. That's how that's done. Now we're gonna make our little insert for our pocket. And you can see I've added this little fairy door down here. I've cut a strip of the three by four images. And we're gonna put this on our scoring tool. And we're gonna score in between the images. Line it up. And then we're just going to accordion fold this and put it in the pocket. So you've got room for four more photos in here and then you've got these sweet images here which is really fun. And this tucks right into the pocket. Okay, I wanna show you how to do these little hidden pocket inserts. So I had just one sheet of this pink um, distressed print left, and I cut it into two four and a quarter by, I think it's 10 and a quarter, yes. And then I just scored it at five and five and one eighth. And the reason you do that extra little eighth inch is that it makes this insert turn over the top and it makes it lie flatter for you. Um, so it just works better. Then from another one of the ephemera cards, I trimmed this down to four inches by four and a quarter inches, rounded the corners and inked the edges. And then we've got our little um, doily. And I forgot to ink the edges on this. I'll do that real quick. And we're going to use this as a tuck spot. You can see how I've done it over here. And this is just real easy to do, which I like real easy, especially when you're making a gift. It's nice to have something that you can do quickly. So I line this up where I want it to be. And I get it centered. And then I just lift the bottom of it and I put about a fourth of an inch of adhesive there and then place this press it down so this is going to hold your little turn tab tuck spot in place but it's also going to leave room for you to put that in there so that completes our little um, folio insert super cute and we're going to set this aside and we'll move on to the next thing. So here you see our little folio all attached to the back of our tag. Just, and it's a little wider. You can make yours more narrow if you want, but I don't mind that. I think it's kind of neat. So on this side where we had painted, I just came in and did the same thing, sponging in some of my inks. And then I sponged Distress Ink over our cobblestones down here. And now we're gonna start building some texture and dimension. I'm going to have a piece of um, cheesecloth that I'm just going to put some glue, hot glue down, and put this in there just randomly. I know I want some of the edges to stick out. So that gets us started. And then I um, Fussy cut the corner out of one of the three by four cards and I have backed this with foam tape and I'm just gonna peel this off and put it up in this corner. And you'll notice that I punched a hole at the top of our tag. That's so we can string some ribbon through. So I'm just gonna put this down so that it's even with where our uh, tag begins to break in the other direction. 
that I fussy cut the fairy door from a three by four card, a four by six card, and fussy cut this little nest fairy. And as you can see, I've attached these together on the back with foam tape. And we're just gonna pull this off. So I want this to have some pretty good dimension. And I wanna nestle this in so I can see I want to pull some of this down here, pull some up here. And what I will do is I will come in with a pick because I kind of wanted this to look like it was floating in clouds. So I'm just going to use my pick to kind of distress some of this. Of course, we're going to be adding flowers. Now I have all these little ephemera pieces. I love these because they are glittered and that makes them really easy to work with. And let's add this right about here. So sweet. And then our little bird kind of perched behind the nest. So I'm just building some layers and dimension here. And you can certainly arrange yours However you see This fit. is Spanish moss. You can get this pretty much at any craft store. And I'm just going to start tucking it in around the base of our, uh, I want our cobblestone to show, but I want this to look like it's really in the woods. This is so cute. And a little bit of this goes a long way because you um, you can pull it out. And I like to leave the little crazy pieces hanging and sticking because it uh, makes it look more natural. A little bit right there. And it doesn't take a lot of glue to anchor that in place. Let me clean up this little bit of a mess that I've made here with my Spanish moss. And I'll be right back. So I just want to show you I added some ribbon and these little keys at the top and now I want to add some flowers. So one last thing I wanted to show you I've got this little ephemera tag, some phone tape on the back of it and I want to tuck this in right here because I like the little pop of glitter and color that adds. Also I tucked some little feathers in with our Spanish moss. Let's take a bunch of these little buds and twist them together. And we're just going to play with placing these on our project. Some leaves and again this is the Kimberly um, it might be celebrate life I'm not sure but it's definitely Kimberly and I will link when all is said and done these little ferns are so sweet with fairies I just love how they look I'm going to twist a few more together. Just like that. And then this one bright pink flower right in the middle. I'm going to trim this little bit of foliage. And I kind of want it to dangle. And I think I want this purple rose up here on this 
outside. And this little key says dream, which is cute for using with this. Now we're just gonna flip it over to this side where I've also added a ribbon. And we're just gonna add a little flower at the top. Finish it off so that it's decorative on both sides. And that completes our project. That's it for me, Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design for Little Birdie Crafts. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video tutorial, please give it a thumbs up so others can find it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you along for the journey. And now I am gonna go get my craft on. Bye.